Hey, what's up you amazing hackers? Hope you're all doing well today. I've been getting the question a lot of how to use AI as your offensive tools of your offensive weapons. Well, today I'm going to show you how you can get AI to write tools for you. But full disclosure, I am using the GPT-4 model and I'm talking specifically about ChatGPT right now. There are other models out there and this one uses GPT-4, of course, um, but there are other models out there which might be more suitable for your cause, such as SecGPT. That's also a model based on GPT-3.5, but with a lot less restrictions around security. Now, that being said, let's say that we want a basic port scanner. Oh, sorry about the noise, by the way. Let's say that we want a basic port scanner. Write me a basic port scanner in Python because we might have Python available. Well, we can ask it to do that. Now, it is a bit slow, as you can see. It takes a little bit, so the previous footage has been sped up quite a bit, of course, but it does generate quite a hefty port scanner for us. Well, not hefty in a sense that it's hard. As you can see here, all it does is it defines the port scanner method which has an array open ports and then for port in range it's going to go through all of the ports in the range if that port is open it's going to append that port to the open ports how does it know it's open we can see here it tries to make an actual connection and if it has a connection it's going to return true so port is open and we're just going to run through it now a port scanner is great but we can also ask it in any language we want of course if we have ruby available if we have go available if we only have bash available we can ask it even to write us a command for let's say netcat or let's say that we want to let's say we have netcat go buster and nuclear that we want to run on any web server so we have an IP address as input, we have a web server or we want to see if a web server is available and if that web server is available we want to run Nuclear and we want to run GoBuster. So we can say write me a script in bash for example to run nmap for port 80 with banner in them uh, then run GoBuster if the port is open and run uh let's see a nuclear and also nikto the last tools should be running in parallel then we're going to wait for it to generate us a multi-threaded script of course amazing that it can do this so fast in any language basically we can write this ourselves pretty easily don't get me wrong but the biggest problem there is fairly simple we can write all we want but we need time for that the time that it takes for this tool to write these tools is nowhere near the same as what we had before when we had to write all of this ourselves this is a simple port scanner that we've written now we've chained some tools together with in this case bash let's say that we only have bash and we want to write a directory buster busting tool write me a tool to do directory brute forcing in bash there we go and we have already prepared the query while we wait for it to finish it's going to tell us exactly what it does. We don't need that. Here we see that we have all of our tools running. Excellent, really well done. Now we can do our brute forcing tool in bash with a target URL and a word list file as input checking for valid directories. As you will see, it will probably do something like make a request and then see if that request returns something like 200 or a specific status code. Then it should be added to a list. I think something along those lines, of course. It depends. And again, we can ask it to write this in any tool that we so desire. 
So that's already another tool that we can have written. We can also ask it to write a template based vulnerability scanner. What am I hinting at? Nuclei, of course. We can also ask it to generate us work lists. It won't always do it, but with some hacking of the system, some jailbreaking, we can get that to run as well. And with GPT 3.5, it will more often than not say that it's not going to do it due to, oh, I don't know, ethical reasons or whatever. That's why I recommend doing this with GPT-4. Now, we have some specialized tools as well, such as a cross-site scripting scanner. Write me an XSS scanner in Go. As you can see, it will do that. It looks for HTML, looking for unsanitized user input with HTML tags. And again, it's going to be a very simple scanner, but we can expand this as we go along intended but um, now we can ask it to write a SQL injection scanner as well write us a SQLI scanner please I always try to keep it busy or I try to type while it's busy now with GPT-4 we only get 25 messages every few hours so Sometimes I run up against that limit, then I might use GPT 3.5 or I'm just going to go and piss off and do something else for a few moments while I wait for that reset, to, while I wait for that limit to reset. And we can do this very, very simple as you can see, but what you have to remember is that it might be a bit outdated. The data that GPT has access to is up until 2021, I believe. So it's outdated by about two years at the time of this making of the making this of this video. So just realize that if you're asking it for links or whatever, those links might be long gone. They might be dead. All right, let's ask it to write us that SQL injection scanner. So this is, this is how you can ask ChatGPT to write you tools that you can use. Now you might have to fine tune them. That's okay though, because here it's really up to us. If we can define what kind of requirements we have. If you are on a very restricted system, this is an ideal tool because you can tell it the exact restrictions you have and it might generate a few bugs. But chances are that those bugs are going to be in your specifications and not per se in the code. I hope that helped a little bit in giving you an idea. Now, I want to stress that this video is not written by AI. These are just some ideas that I have. So I would like to know your ideas in the comments below. And I also want to stress that any of these scripts is not used for malicious purposes, of course. Please do not use these for malicious purposes and make sure you have sufficient written permission to hack on systems that you're going to attack. Thank you very much, my friends. That was it. I will see you in the next one. Bye, amazing hackers.